Okay. So in uh, actually, what I'll do is. Okay, so georeferencing. What I'm giving you right now is a basic map of Chicago. What we have here are census tracts, uh, the parks and open space, and major streets. Um, for now, I'll turn off the census tracts. This uh, was more keyed into the, the uh, census tutorial I wanted to show, but I won't show that to now uh, for the sake of time. All we need are these two, parks and streets. Now, generally when you look at, when you do research, you might find, for instance, historical maps like this. If you find online, this is a historical map of the Great Fire of Chicago that basically caused Chicago to rebuild itself um, in, the, uh, in the 19th century. We want to take this data, this map, and we want to use it in our art map document. Um, but we don't know how. We, we, we think you can bring this into Photoshop or Illustrator and trace these things. No, don't do that. Um, just bring it into your art map document and georeference it. So what you're referencing means is that we can bring any raster image or even CAD files and geolocate it on your site. And this is an extremely, extremely powerful tool if you find, for instance, like these historical maps that you want to use in your uh, research but you don't know how to use it besides in its raw format like this. This is just, as you can see, it's just literally a photograph of a map from the book. So what you need to do is, uh, in your ArcMic document, you need to have a base already set up that you can reference your map to. You need to have a way to link the two, and so that's why I have this road layer and this park layer here. So just add that raster as if you'd add any other drawing. So it's right here, Chicago 1872, just add that. It's gonna say it has no spatial reference, and that's true because it's, it's just a JPEG. It doesn't know what it, what it is or why it exists. Um, if you go to the geo reference, there's a geo referencing uh, tab here. Uh, this is how you connect that information to this map here. So make sure your georeferencing raster is set to the image you want to uh, edit right here. Uh, and then you want to first just basically move it so that it's in the viewport. So the first thing you do is you click uh, fit to display. And it just kind of brings it in. It doesn't know where it is. It just kind of like uh, brings it into the extents that is right here. Uh, for the sake of clarity, uh, I'm just going to actually put a transparency on this map, like a 50% transparency, so I can see the road layer a little bit better. And then what we want to do is we want to click this Add Control Points button right here. And now what we need to do is we need to basically set points, uh, click the reference map, the raster first, and then where its location is on the arc map. And at least three points are needed. In fact, I recommend using only three points. If you go more than that, uh, it doesn't look as good. Two or three points is really all you need to do this. So let's do a feature that is easy to see. Let's, oh, I should add a, uh, a river layer, but we can work with this. Um, let's do, let's see if we can find, this is, this is the only tough part, it's just finding areas that are the same. If I had my river layer, that would have made it easier. Um, it doesn't have to be 100% accurate, accurate the first time you do it. Uh, it just needs to be close enough because I show you. Okay, so here I see this uh, corner here and this triangle here. I assume they're the same, so I'll just guess. It's okay to guess. So click here and then click where it's on the map. This is another point. Get it kind of, uh, kind of there the first go around and just you can change it. I'll show you how to change it later. Um, let's see, this is always the toughest part. Oh, God. Okay, so I added a river layer here to make it easy for me to, because water and natural features generally um, are pretty reliable. So I can see this little uh, curve feature here and this little curve feature here. Let's use that to uh, start. So I'll click that there. Right here. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect because we can always adjust it later. And then uh, try to have your points distributed like across the map pretty, uh, pretty evenly. It's not so you don't have like bunch of points bunched together. Um, where am I? Okay, this piece here and that piece here are the same. So let's connect this uh, break in the river to this. Okay, we're pretty much there. 
Okay, so you can kind of see it's, it's pretty close now. So now we just adjust the links so that it, it starts to match up with the road link, road layer. So you see these roads here? Um, let's make it like a thick blue color. So just select your point and just, just move it so that the roads begin to line up with the map. As close as you can. Move it down to the bottom link here. Move that a bit so that this bottom part matches up. Uh, yeah, I see this little grid here. And then maybe add a third point to stretch it. So let's let's go this little this little intersection right here. There's a little triangle. Connect that point to this point here. Again, three points is my recommended number. More than that actually doesn't look good at all. Three is pretty much your limit. And that looks pretty good. That looks pretty close. So obviously you can mess with it um, and tweak it. But when it, look, when it looks pretty close, just update georeferencing. And now it's set in the same place here. And then what we can do is you can just re-export this map as a TIFF file, so data, export data. Um, don't save it in the geodatabase, save it in a location outside of it, like uh, here, and just see, you can, it saves as a TIFF file, so just call it like that, everything was fine. Extent raster data set, click save, yes. As you can see, the, the uh, status bar is increasing. But now we basically, we've created our uh, own raster data set that you can remove and you can add to your uh, JoyS documents in the future, and the map will always be georeferenced. So then you can take that, you can export it, you can bring that map if if you have the terrain, you want to drip that terrain on your or drip that map on your terrain. It's, I can bring historical information to your uh, drawing. Sorry. Okay. So click yes, and there you go. It's right here. So you can remove the original JPEG. Uh, but your new map is right there, and uh, it links up with the parks. So maybe if you have, you're studying the history of a site, you want to kind of look like how the current day urbanism compares with the previous, uh, the history of that site. This is a way to do that. Okay.